Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Compact Claustrophobia. I have not really done much in between episodes, so we're just gonna focus on what we want to do today. And that has to do a little bit with our resource generation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it out of this 5x5 compact machine. And we're gonna put it into a normal compact machine, which is gonna give it a little bit more space and we can structure the whole system a little bit better. I wanna set up the caches in a way where we can have them hooked up to external storages. And for that, we're gonna have to do a bit of a redesign in this room as well, because I kind of wanna set up the refined storage system to have a cable going in the center possibly, or maybe just in the wall somewhere in the back. And we can make the room a little bit smaller and then we can have compact machines on the walls power underneath and then the refined storage cable on top. Something like that seems like a good idea, I think. I think for the time being, this is quite an okay of a redesign. I put my power cube right over here and we're extracting into this controller or apparently we are not because maybe these require a little bit of a reconnect. There we go. Boom, boom. Should we, are we now getting power? Yes, okay, cool. So our power cube is right over here, extracting into the controller, and then we have our system over here, and then I have a cable going over and the top of all of my compact machines that I'm currently using. And what we're gonna do is, for example, in this one here, we can set up an external storage on top of this guy, and we can just bring a cable up to the ceiling or something, or maybe somewhere to the side, but we can have HOP graphite ingots directly into our storage system. And over here, since we have all of these down here, what we can do is set up a tunnel and it needs to be on up, so it's connected to the cable. And if we go to our storage system, do we see all the things? Uh, yeah, grit. We see iron and uranium. Um, silver? No. Why is it not working? All right, all I had to do was replace the cable up top here and now we can see everything in our system. And what I'm gonna do is a thing that I already did in between episodes. I'm gonna grab my disk manipulator and we're gonna set a priority on this guy to be minus 10, right? So then we're gonna take our storage disk here. We're gonna grab some upgrades that I have on me. We're gonna toss them in here like so. And then we're gonna toss our storage disk and pump it through here. So it should clear out every piece of redstone and all of that stuff that we have on our external storages. Uh, it should clear it out out of the storage disks and put it into the caches first. So everything should get cleaned up, I think. I found a really cool solution for how I wanna do our resources and I have already done everything. So it all starts in this room where I have made a pattern grid and with that I made a couple of patterns and also a bunch of crafters and in here we have a pattern for an iron pickaxe and a pattern for a stone pickaxe. And I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna explain what is happening in here from the back, from where it's actually happening. So what we have is a tunnel putting in a refined storage cable that is hooked up to two exporters with crafting upgrades and they are exporting stone pickaxes and iron pickaxes into their corresponding auto clickers. This tunnel down here is providing them power and we have an accumulator collecting everything and then a duct extracting with a signal and retriever everything into another tunnel in the other compact machine. So on the north side here, it's hooked up to the item duct from the accumulator and everything is coming into this strong box and apparently it's kind of keeping up, I think it is. Anyway, so it's all coming into this strong box. Then we have a servo down on the bottom extracting everything that goes into its corresponding cache. And if it, the cache fills up, the last spot it can go to is a nullifier, which is just gonna make it very easy for us to have this pretty much running all the time without having a worry of accumulating a bunch of items on the floor here. So on top here, we have a tunnel that is uh, hooked up to a refined storage cable it is then hooked up to all of these external storages, which makes all of these uh, dusts, grits, and all of that visible in our storage system. So the power is just coming in here from the bottom on the down and going in on the down and then coming out over here in the middle as well. So that is our wonderful storage solution for our resource production.
I have also moved our garden cloches into a 7x7x7 compact machine because that allows us to have eight of them in here with nice display of all of the things growing. We can cover up the cables easily and make it look really pretty. So this infinite water source is providing water in these uh, signalum plated fluid ducts down here. And all of these garden cloches are getting power from this tunnel right here that is going through this signalum plated item duct. It hooks up down here with all of the item ducts around to transfer all of the items to their corresponding caches. And I am doing a few extra things here. One of them is using a sequential fabricator to pull the industrial hemp from the left and output string over here to the right. I also am pulling bonsai oak cuttings into a sawmill and that is pushing oak planks onto the right. The sawdust gets pushed up top and stored in here. And because the sawdust is probably gonna fill up at some point, when we use planks, it's gonna produce more. And I have installed a nullification chamber, which destroys excess secondary outputs. Really, they just disappear, gone. <laughs> so uh, this guy, if whenever sawdust gets filled, is just gonna destroy it. And then I pull into this sequential fabricator to craft sticks. I also have a cobblestone generator here in the corner that is producing cobblestone that is hooked up with an external storage as well. And the last thing, we are using a sawmill to pull both carrots and potatoes into here to produce pulp biomass, which is used in the recipe with sawdust to make pulp bio blend. And the pulp bio blend is then used with sewage to make more poop in the fluid transposer, I believe, over here. Yeah. So we can use that in another compact machine, probably where we're going to set up the poop injector thingy. Uh, we can use that to uh, make more poop and more sewage. So now I will use a few of these covers uh, over here and we can cover everything up and make it look nice and pretty. I am gonna leave these item ducts uncovered because it's kind of nice to see the items going from place to place. And up here, I just covered everything up because I think that looks much nicer than the mess of cables that is behind the cloches. And it's looking really, really cool and wonderful. I also decided to reverse the item ducts and the cables in this room as well. So we can now just place blocks underneath to cover all of the external storages and we can see all of the items going through here. So we can just place some blocks here in the corners like so. And that should work beautifully. But I want to get some more refined storage automation going for all of our ingots and more things that we can process in redstone furnaces, pulverizers, stuff like that. So I have another 7x7 here that I set up with a lot of redstone furnaces. And what I wanted to do here is pretty much go on top of the redstone furnaces here and set up exporters like so on all of these. And we're going to cook up all of the ingots that we're getting from our uh, from our resource production compact machine. And the other thing that we're going to make is some detectors. And I'm going to make like 20. Sure. That should take a moment because the crafters are fairly slow in the beginning, but they should get made at some point. And with the detectors, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to smack them on top of here. And we can say when to stop emitting um, or outputting any sort of item that we want in here. So for example, let's say we want to keep 5,000 iron ingots in the system all the time. We set that up in here. It's going to stop exporting iron grit into here once we have 5,000 iron ingots that we're going to de detect down here with external storages all around these guys. We now have a full compact machine of all of the things that need to be smelted, pulverized, manufactured, all the things. So. These five are just the basic ingots and also over here, the ones that we are getting from our research generation. Then over here, I have the four alloys that we can currently make. Uh, I know we can make signalum and other things, but we don't have those things automated just yet. And these are a simple crafting recipe uh, that I can set up with a pattern in the system and it just crafts two iron and one nickel into Envar Blend and exports it here and makes a thousand of it with the detector up top. So the important thing that you have to keep in mind is that this needs to be uh, on redstone mode and the detector needs to be set to emit a signal when under the amount. So as soon as we run out of, let's say, Invar, it exports Invar Blend and cooks it up into more Invar. Cool. So these ducts are providing power and are also uh, the 
transferring of items into all of the machines. Then we also have stone being made, glass, gravel, and sand, and also silicon and pulverized obsidian. And because I'm an overachiever and I want to have everything in a better way, I decided to dismantle our clay and obsidian and lava operations that we had before. And we're going to do this another time in a better way. But for the time being, I just have everything hooked up to external storages. And this is still processing a little bit of the backlog of the dust. And once it's done, I'm just going to destroy it. And we have almost 10,000 bone meal and 3,500 stall floor, 20,000 clay blocks almost 20,000 clay and 12,000 obsidian. So for the time being, I think we should be fine. But sooner rather than later, I'll take care of this. I might do it in between episodes if I have some time. But other than that, it's just going to stay like this for the time being. We are now ready to work on the pressure poop injector. And I have crafted all the things and assembled it a little bit of the ways. And we're just going to assemble it fully to the end here together. So the metal barrel goes in the middle and then we surround it by iron sheet metal. And then we bring the pipes one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. And I think that should be it. Structure found, pressure poop injector, missing input item. Okay, so we can use this to turn small compact machines into glitched small machines. And that requires a bunch of sewage. So what we're going to do, we have a huge fluid input. I, it's called a vacuum fluid input hatch, which can hold 256 millibuckets. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab everything that we have here and we're going to set it up in the other compact machine a little bit better and more efficient. And here we have a super simple system of making poop and making sewage. So this barrel is going to constantly create sewage, it's going to get water from the bottom with the compact infinite water source and we're exporting poop constantly in here, extracting into to the portable tank. And then we're, I believe, retrieving it or servo get, retrieving it into this guy. Uh, so it's always filled up with sewage. And then the poop part is made over here. And we are detecting how much poop we have in the system because one poop equals one sewage. And so long as we have poop, we have sewage. So as soon as we run out of poop, this exporter is going to export pulp bioblend and it's going to start constantly making more poop, storing it in here with an external storage and producing more sewage. Then the sewage is also provided here to the fluid transposer through the top. And that is pretty much a fully functioning system. Here is where the power is coming in and that's pretty much it. So we can now easily cover up all of these cables like so and then also cover up these guys with some of the refined storage covers like that. And I also ran a small machine through the poop injector and we now have a glitched small machine. And if we come over here, let's put it right here. We can use our corrupt personal shrinking device and we can head in here. No. Ooh, you know what might be needed in quest line? Oh, Oh, apparently it did work. Oh, it was just slow. Oh, yeah. So this is a questing thing, right? I think. Quest lines, glitch adventures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have to go. Oh, you can go home by doing this. Okay, cool. So we don't have to do it right now. But I might actually go do that adventure thing. Uh, and it gives you all your inventory things back. So let me clean up some stuff in my inventory and we can go do that glitched adventure. Before we head into any sort of glitch dimension, we're going to make ourselves a grapple. And I think this uses a uses string for fuel of sorts. So we can grab ourselves like a bunch of string here. That should be plenty. And I'm also going to grab a tiny compact machine. And we're going to grab our bucket of sewage that I have in here. And we're going to because I don't think I have one in the system here. Yeah, so we're going to grab that toss it. No. In there. There you go. Glitch tiny machine. We can put you right here and we can go finish off this, first of all. In this first compact machine, I didn't notice that there were three more quests for three different locations. So we can try and see where we can get to. So one of them, I think, is up there. Can I even grapple right up there? Oh god. No, catch yourself in the water. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
So what we'll try and do is see if we can water our way up to the top. Apparently, I just had to stand in this spot for a little, bit, a little bit, but we completed this guy and we can grab ourselves some bedrock leggings, apparently. Awesome, sure, we'll take those. And then I can go and try and find the other dimensions. So this one says these blocks seem to indicate its abilities. Okay, so that's the same. It's 324, 149. So that is down below somewhere. So let's just head on down here. Okay. So we're 152, and what is the thing? 324. So that is like back here. Is it? Oh, I think it might be that one just behind here. I think we might just have to stand on this. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that gets us eight modularium or leather boots. We'll take the leather boots just so we can have some armor. Okay. And then this one is 393157395. So there's Futura blocks in there and we might we weren't able to we weren't able to reach them before. But we can at least try now and we can go in here. Ross and make our way back to the house over there. Okay, I made it back to the house, so I think it's just this one, and we have to stand on top of it. And that should be it. There we go. We can get ourselves a satchel, which is also a bag, and I think the biggest satchel is bigger, but we can see if the, um, if the reinforced satchel is bigger than our shulker box for the time being. Um, it might be better. Anyway. That's uh, the glitch zero complete. And now let's go into the small glitch, the glitch one, and complete that questing thingy mabob. Alrighty, let's head on in and see what there is to do. Hello? What? Glitch small machine. Did I use the wrong thing? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, cool. Quest book. I think we can just use Y. Yeah. So we need to collect some sticks. Getting all these hard surfaces hurt my hands. I need some tool to dig. Perhaps a branch could work. After right click. Ah, okay, we got ourselves some sticks. And then we need to find flint. With your trusty stick in hand, you should be able to dig in gravel for flint. Oh, speed noises. Is there gravel? Of course it's nighttime and there's uh, skelly bobs everywhere. So, gravel? Anywhere? Really? No gravel? No gravel in sight? Not even here? Do mobs hurt me? Are you... Yeah, oh, definitely they do. Okay. Cool, cool. So, wonderful that I spawn at night time. I think there's another, maybe, river. Maybe gravel. Somewhere here, more mobs. Seriously, game? I have to go here to get gravel. Alright, got flint. We did it. Can I at least craft some stuff without being killed? Okay. So, flint on a stick. Cutting tool. Uh, stick. Flint. Cutting tool. Alright. I think we then left click this on grass, or right click, yeah, we get hemp, awesome, um, I'm gonna make a couple of these, so I get a bit of hemp, okay, what's the next step is to turn that into hemp rope coil, which is one stick and three industrial hemp fiber, I need to go back to a tree, right here and I'm already out of food to, to even do anything all right there were skeletons next to this one but I'm sure we'll be fine all right more sticks we can make ourselves some hemp rope coil there we go 
now we can make ourselves a can you detect please there we go we can make ourselves a primitive axe which is one flint one hemp rope coil and two sticks all right two sticks one flint one hemp rope coil primitive axe oh i can i can kill zombies all right and then i think we right click Get ourselves flankage. All right, and now we can do what? Crafting table. All right. Then it's pickaxe, which is three flint, two hemp rope coil, and two sticks. So stick and gravel needs to make more flint. Alright, we're still gonna die of hunger. Alright, crafting table. Pick. Oh god, hi. You wanna drop me a piece of rotten flesh? That would be lovely if you do. Oh, thank you. At least a tiny bit of food. <laughs> Alright. Hemp rope coil, two of these, three of these, pickaxe. It says only right click me. So with a pickaxe, text submit, there we go. We need to get real stones. So I think we need to go and click on, co on cobble, which we had a cave back here somewhere. I think, yeah, here it was. All right, give me all of the pebbles. All right, no, stop. What are you? Brr. It was a weird zombie. All right, we got cobblestone. Combo pick can extract ores. Right click an ore to get it out. Okay. So assume we make a cobblestone pickaxe. Oh, that hurts me a lot. We can get coal. Where do I extract things out of? Redstone, right click to get. From what? Right click from what? It doesn't say. Hobble pick can extract ores. Right click an ore to get it out. But finding redstone and gold and iron, that is a little bit of a task to do in 300 seconds and with no hunger whatsoever. Give me more chickies. This is a difficult task. Five minutes remaining still okay, hopefully. Apparently blindness doesn't affect not be fine. Uh, okay. So... I guess you have to dig down. I mean, we could just drop down, but we're gonna die. Yep. Yeah. What happens then? You basically just respawn back and you have to go through the whole team island, my island thing, and then you end up over here and you can get back into your compact machine. So I want to do this again, but I will do it next episode, I think. We can tr have one try per episode until we get this completed. I think that sounds like a good idea. So I want to try the satchel next. So I want to see how 
big this is if we can make it like so hardened satchel and then i think i have in bar nuggets yes okay i think this needs oh it doesn't need uh cryothium nice we can get to the signalum one awesome uh and then the enderium one requires just that an enderium and we could potentially make enderium because we can just use the um the crafting thing Ooh, we have plat i don't think we have platinum okay we can't make enderium any hoozle this is one row bigger than this which is gonna be my new satchel now I want to add some item frames over our compact machines to basically designate what we have inside of them. And I think a cactus will be a good designation of our garden cloches. Then here we have our resource generation. So that's going to be an iron grit. And over here, it's going to be our, an iron ingot that apparently I didn't grab uh, one of these. What? Where are you going? Why does it? I don't know why one anyway you you saw that happen i don't know what that was so here it can be just some clay like so this one is our poop so we can grab ourselves one piece of poop and put you here and then this one is our immersive engineering things so we're gonna put an engineer's hammer here uh this one is our tree farm so you can have an oak wood boom there we go. Cool. Uh, so now we have a little bit of designation for all of our compact machines. And once we get... Hello, cars. I don't know if you heard that, but there was just a lot of uh, a lot of honking outside. But can I put a cover underneath this? I totally can. Uh, we can pretty much cover all of these that are already hooked up. And we're never going to have to re-hook them up again. Another thing that I did notice in here, we have reborn storage, so we don't necessarily have to use crafters because they can be kind of spacious. There are nine crafts per block and we can set up this guy, which can store a whole bunch more of these crafting recipes. And also we have storage parts of higher tiers. So we can take a 256K and turn it into a 256K storage disk and we can toss you in here and then get this guy transferred over. I am going to do a 5x5x3, five by five by so we get a total of a 2 high interior, which we can put 9 of each crafting storage and crafting CPUs, like so, and like so, and then we can fill this in with this. Aha! Multi-block crafter. We have 9 CPUs. Uh, is this the entire space that we have? Oh, it's, it's 9 pages of this. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, that's a lot of storage. So we can now grab all of these patterns that we have inside of all of these crafters and we can just toss them inside the top into here. And let's test the speed with a simple task. Oh, it's not bad, not bad. We could add more crafting CPUs and less storage because nine pages is probably plenty. And we could reduce it to maybe like five pages or so, or even make the thing bigger. Like we can make it the entire size of this, if need be, to make it a bit more faster. That can definitely happen and be the case. One thing that I wonder, does this work as cable transference thingy? Kind of like everything in refined storage. So if I hook this up, do we have everything in our compact machines hooked up? So the, the easiest way to test this, yeah, we do. All right, that's neat. So I can grab some covers here and we can do bam, bam, bam. And it's super clean. And we just have a tower of things in the middle. And then we can cover this up as well, like so. Nice. I have reset up our melter over here. And this guy is gonna just process 24 normal compact machines into normal machine pieces, and we can turn those into large compact machines, and that's gonna make a total of six, and we can then use those to make ourselves a giant compact machine, which is made into the multi-block miniaturization thing with a machine casing in the middle, six of these in each of the four centers, and then 20 compact machine walls around it to make a giant compact machine. We can now run these six large compact machines through our poop machine, and it should, turn it into the glitched large machines. 
Do I have to give you one at a time? Ah. Okay, that's weird. Apparently, one at a time is the case. Alright, but that makes glitched large machines, so I'm gonna toss the rest of these through here. And if you're wondering how I made all of those normal compact machines, well, the miniaturization field... So the recipe for this is just a 3x3 three by three by three of compact machine walls with a block of gold in the middle and an ender pearl. And you can get ender pearls through the same thing with obsidian and redstone. And we're gonna assemble this together because it's a monumental moment of us getting a bigger compact machine. So we can do like that. Bam, 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 bam. This one in the middle. This round on top. And another one like this. And then pearl. You stole my pearl. Is it a pearl? I think it's a pearl. It totally was an ender pearl. This guy just picked it up before it could make contact. But this is going to take a moment, and once it's done, we are going to have ourselves a wondrous 11 by 11 by 11 compact machine. And plop! You're... aren't you... you're whitelisted. Use all of the dictionaries. Oh yeah, because it's compact machine's machine. Right. <laughs> okay, so we have a 11 by 11 by 11. And I think the... this one requires six of the 11 by 11 by 11s. So it requires six times that of the normal ones. So I had to, you make 24, so it's 24 times six to make the other ones. And I think it's best to automate the process to make this because I don't want to sit there uh, clicking with my co copy paste gadget for six years to get this. But we are now unlocked Ender Integrated Sapling. Well, how do you do this? Oak plus resin and ender. Make some mandrel sapling. Okay, interesting. And we can then grow mandrel trees, I assume in the 11 by 11 by 11 room. Uh, and we can uh, then get ourselves... The end is nigh. Okay, so we can basically get ourselves integrated dynamics unlocked, I think. But this requires the end, which requires the fusion reactor, which is all that good stuff. Anyway. Right, let's see how this looks. We're gonna put you right here. Boom. Boom. So much space. It's so big. Oh god, it's so wonderful. Anyway, this is gonna have to be it for today. So I wanna thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for all the positive comments that you've been leaving me. It's really been amazing. I'm having so much fun playing this pack and I'm glad you're enjoying it as well. So if you really are, make sure you hit the like button. You can also subscribe to get notified of new videos. You can also ring the bell as well. That is a thing that people do. And you can support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.